Hi there, I'm John from cncking.com and in today's video what we're going to do is review the Speedy 400 and compare that to the Speedy 500. Uh, a few months ago I made a video uh, going through all the features and benefits of the Speedy 300. So you definitely want to give that a try and a review before you see this video just to help you uh, gain a better understanding of the differences between uh, Trotex range. Now what I really like about this machine is that it's incredibly powerful. You have the pass-through ability of the Speedy 500 and you have the speed of the 300. If you have any questions about this machine or any other machines that you see here, uh, what you want to do is head over to trotechlaser.com.au. I don't work for Trotech, uh, so I can't really field any questions you may have or handle sales or any of those kind of things. So head, head over to trotechlaser.com.au and they'll answer any questions you may have. First, let's take a look at Trotec's ultimate cutting machine, the Speedy 500. What's really nice about this laser is it comes up to 200 watts, which is plenty of power for most applications. I appreciate that it's very difficult to work out scale on video or even photographs. So to really appreciate this bed size, what I did is put a meter stick. As you can see, you have roughly 1245 by 710 millimeters on the Speedy 500. Now there is a larger machine, uh, the Speedy 1500, which is basically two of these machines back to back. So let's open up the 400, which I think is just awesome. It's like opening up a door for a Lamborghini. There we go. Now I have two frames of reference for you here. Uh, the meter stick that I had on the 500, and this here represents the work area of the 300. It's slightly smaller, uh, but it gives you an idea of the differences. Now the Speedy 300, which I reviewed earlier, was roughly this bed size, and that's 726 by 432 millimeters. Now the 400, as you can see, is much larger. That's a meter by 610 millimeters. The 500, on the other hand, is actually even larger. It's 1245 by 710. So you are losing some bed size going from the 500 to the 400, but you're gaining a lot of bed size going from the 300 to the 400. And you're also gaining on speed and pass-through ability, which is something you don't have with the Speedy 300. Before we jump into a few more machine stats, uh, let's talk a little bit about bed size. If you run a CNC laser shop or a or router shop and you're thinking about getting this machine, you notice that you do lose some bed size. But if you know anything about the industry generally, you don't use the whole bed size. You have a lot of one-offs or small projects here and there. So the huge bed size of the 500 is just fantastic. But it's very rare that you use the whole thing. What I really like about the 300 is it's a compact size, so it has a very small floor space. So I see the 400 as the ultimate compromise uh, between floor space and bed size, because this is actually really, really large, especially when you can open the back and you have pass-through ability, which means you could actually put a whole door through this thing if you wanted to. You can't do that with the 300, and 500, well, that's a given. Now, this machine is a flex. And what's really nice about a flex is that you can have a CO2 tube and a fiber tube in the same machine. Now CO2, this machine right now goes up to 120 watts and fiber is 50 watts. But if you have limited, uh, limited floor space, you can have both in this one machine. Now why would that be cool? Well, take a look at this knife for instance. You have a stainless steel and you have wood. Let's say you have 10,000 of these things you need to engrave. One, that's great because you'll pay off the machine right away. Uh, you want to engrave somebody's name on the wood, and you want to engrave a company logo on the stainless steel. If you don't have a flex, you have to run this through a fiber machine, take them out, you probably use a jig like this, and then do the wooden handle as a separate pass or a separate machine. If with this machine here, you could do a jig, line them all up, and do this and this at the same time. So you save an incredible amount of time uh, having a flex machine. And it's just an amazing capability to have that not, be, not, not many people really know about or know how to benefit from the most. Now I know for a fact that some of you are going to say, hey, I could do this in one pass as well uh, using Surmark. Surmark is a paste that you put over the stainless steel that allows you to use a CO2 tube to engrave stainless steel. Now if you read the ingredients, it's toxic. And if you have 10,000 of these things to do, 
Honestly, you shouldn't be using Ceramark. It's going to cost you a fortune. You got to wait for it to dry and all these kind of things. So for volume quantities like this, fiber is the only way to go. We're now back on the Speedy 500. And hopefully the first thing you notice is this huge gantry and this massive head. Now the way the laser works is it comes through here, hits the mirror, and then goes straight down. Now the mirror is very easy to clean. You just turn some screws, take it out, and you can clean it. Same thing with the lens here, which is again very easy to take out. You have your extraction under here, which is really, really nice because when you're doing a lot of work, you actually see all the smoke and the vapor gets sucked right up. And you also have gas or air if you want, and that goes straight down with the beam. So it, again, it helps to push all the vapor and stuff away from your lens and your mirror uh, so they don't get gunked up this fast. Now let's have a quick chat about this massive gantry. This is incredibly important because if you, when, you're when you're using a CNC laser, if stuff is moving around on you, like flexing or bending, you just threw all the precision you get out of a CNC machine in the garbage. Now, Trotec builds their machines like I build my models. They're just wickedly overbuilt, and that's fantastic. Let's talk a little bit more about this machine in a little bit more detail. Having a very strong gantry is fantastic. You need that, especially for such a large bed. What's equally as important, though, is having a strong frame for that gantry. There's no point in having a strong gantry if the frame is bending on you, or if you hit it with your knee, all the mirrors go out of alignment. So this machine is really, really heavy. It's really, really strong, and it's incredibly well built. At the same time, it's very easy to use. You can see your whole project here. You won't die from smoke inhalation, because you have just awesome extraction with the system, because everything's contained very, very well. Now let's take a look at the 400 again. Here we have the head of the 400. As you can see, it's a lot smaller than the 500. You also have the impact technology here, and you have the ribbon here. This thing here is actually the LED lighting, which is nice because you don't need to use a flashlight to see your work uh, being cut or engraved. The extraction is through the back here. And what's really nice about having a slotted design is that if you have a project that only needs this much room, you can actually cover the rest with masking tape and have even stronger extraction where you're actually engraving or cutting. Now this machine here moves at 4G acceleration, 355 centimeters a second, while the 300 moves 5G. Again, it's the same speed, 355 centimeters a second. Let me show you the coolest feature of the Speedy 400. That's it right there. Um, if this thing had a seat, honestly, you want to sit in it and drive it away. It's just awesome. I just, I just love the way this thing opens. Anyways, I took the mirror off, and I forgot to talk about a little bit about it. So here's what the mirror looks like for the Speedy 400. Speedy 500 is basically the same, just a little bit larger. And even that is kind of heavy, so it's a good thing that I work out. So otherwise, I'd be using two hands to hold it up. Now, let's talk a little bit about having a fast machine. If your machine is slow, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Let me give you an example. I buy this one here, and I have a really fast machine. My hourly rate, let's just say $200 an hour. Customer comes in the door and he says, I have this project. You do the calculations in job control, and it tells you one hour. So 200 bucks, and you make some money. Same customer goes to the guy across the street, and he's got a different machine. His machine is half the speed. So he's charging $200 per hour as well, but it takes him two hours. So he tells the customer $400. Customer comes back to you and says, well, that guy charged me 400 How come you want to charge 200 What's wrong with your machine? And you just say, well, I'm done in one hour. He's done in two. So I could charge you less. Or if you're really smart, this is what you do. You charge $400. You charge the same rate as the guy across the street. Now, that's not very competitive, but it is. Because now you're making $400 an hour versus his $200 an hour. And that means you have a much nicer shop. You can do, you know, you can invest more money into your business. Now that you've seen uh, both machines, 400 and the 500, let's just do a quick review of the 300 so you really notice the differences. 
So this one's a flex. So it has a CO2 and a fiber tube in it. Um, this thing, it's in the way, isn't it? Um, generally, it's not too much of an issue, but it is here, and you can't take it off. So there's a big difference right there. Bed size is a lot smaller. Uh, 400, 500, both beds go up and down. You could put a vacuum table, honeycomb table, whatever kind of table you want. Uh, the other thing is uh, the head, which you can't see in this video here. Um, you have, again, the same uh, laser pointer and other features. Um, there's just a ton of little features about these machines uh, that I could list off, but again, call your rep and he'll sort you out. Something that happens to me on a very regular basis on cncking.com is somebody sending me machine stats or saying, I have X machine, should I buy Y, or what machine should I get for this application, these kind of things. Your, your machine is based on your application, not the other way around. For cncking.com specifically, a 500 is fantastic because I have the large cutting size, uh, large cutting bed size, and I would only use a CO2 laser anyways. Like I'm only cutting either acrylic or I'm cutting wood. So for me, this is awesome. Now, if I was running a CNC laser shop, where you have people walking in the door with who knows what, and they wanted to engrave their cut, uh, the 400 flex would be incredibly difficult to beat. Um, you have the pass-through that you don't have on the 300. You have a much larger bed size, as you saw. And it's just incredibly fast. For cncking.com, I don't care if a job takes you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes. Who cares? Uh, but if I'm running a shop, time is money, and you really want that speed. Um, it's definitely worth the investment. Again, these machines are all very, very strong, so this helps them last a long time. They also look great. If you have any other questions, let me know. But if, you're, if you have questions specifically about these machines, again, head over to trotechlaser.com.au, and they'll answer all your questions. Um, even if you're not in Australia, they'll answer them anyways and set you up in the country of your origin.